Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, and in this video, I show how a few lines of Python code can automate a bunch of test equipment. Learning how to do this can help you speed up repetitive tasks and perform measurements your test tools do not do natively. And it's just fun to write a simple test script that makes all kinds of cool test action happen. All of the code and details of what to install are available in the link below on the Element 14 community. With that, let's go automate. Heads up, getting into this automation stuff turns this video into acronym soup. So my goal here is to introduce you to all of the pieces and show a couple of examples. First off, I am using a Raspberry Pi because, well, Linux works really well and the Pi 400 is an adorable option for this task. But anything running Linux and Python should work. Next, I am focused on tools with USB, LAN, or serial ports. Later, I explain all of the words I'm about to use that you have never heard of. Okay. Let's start with an example using this Multicomp Pro Bench DMM. While this DMM does have a USB port, connecting to the 9-pin serial port is a little easier, especially with a serial-to-USB cable. On the Linux computer, we have a Python script that loads a module called PyVisa. It has a resource manager that we can use to connect to the DMM through the computer's virtual serial port. Since the DMM is an actual serial port, we need to set the baud rate. Now we issue a query which writes the star IDN question mark command to the DMM and reads back the response. Then another query to read the active measurement value. Running the script, we see the identify string and a readout that matches the DMM. Using a loop and a magic Python module, now we get a continuous reading with proper units. So a handful of commands and we're talking to the DMM using Python. Pretty cool, huh? Now, there is a ton going on in that code that we need to unpack. So let's start with why is the module even called PyVisa? Visa stands for the Virtual Instrument Software Architecture. It is an API that makes it easier for software to communicate with an instrument regardless of its physical connection. The PyVisa module is a Python wrapper that interfaces with a Visa driver. A Visa driver allows software to send commands formatted according to the standard commands for programmable instruments specification, or you can shorten it to Skippy. This long string is a single Skippy command from the DMM's programming manual. It has a command and parameter section separated by a space. The parameter side is usually one value or keyword. The braces and pipes indicate a choice of options. Here, it's a numeric value or the words minimum or maximum. The commands are a multi-level tree separated by colons. For example, since has voltage and other commands like resistance in it. Also, the square brackets mean that the since root command is optional. Voltage can refer to AC or DC, and then there is a third level range command which is used to set the measurement range. Notice the mixed case for all of the words. Capital letters are required and lowercase is optional, but the commands themselves are case insensitive. Last, not shown, is that this command usually ends with a new line and carriage return character. So, this short form command sets the DC voltage range to its maximum setting. This example shows the asterisk character, which indicates a special command such as preset or identify. The semicolon is a shortcut to send multiple commands on a single line. The question mark is used for commands which should return a value. The good thing is that commands for instruments from multiple vendors may look very similar. The bad thing is that the behaviors themselves are not defined. For example, on this scope, star RST is the same as pressing the front panel's preset button. While on the power supply from the same manufacturer, that same command reboots the entire instrument. Which, by the way, when an instrument reboots, you usually lose the Visa connection to it. You might also hear of IVI, which is another API known as Interchangeable Virtual Instruments. It mostly replaced a really old standard called VXI, but in general, it uses the Visa driver to also send Skippy commands. So, to talk to instruments, the computer needs a Visa driver. Visa drivers are available from several test and measurement manufacturers, including NI, Roden Schwartz, and Keysight, plus a few others. However, make sure you read the licensing terms very carefully. In the case of at least one of those, my interpretation of their license says you cannot use their Visa software unless you use their popular automation software, some of their hardware, or pay a $700 licensing fee. 
For that reason, in this video, I am using an open source visa driver called PyVisa-Py, which is not confusing at all, is it? So to be clear, I am using the Python module PyVisa as a wrapper to the visa driver called PyVisa-Py. Now you can tell PyVisa which visa driver to use if you have multiple installed. When you start getting targeted ads for credit cards, please don't blame me. Anyway, next let's talk about GPIB, LXI, RS-232, and USB TMC. Really, I'm not just making up letters as I talk. These are all real things engineers say as if they're actual words. About 500 years ago, Hewlett Packard was best known as a test and measurement company. Back then, some of their instruments included an HP instrument bus connector. HPIB connected entire labs of equipment together and could be controlled by a desktop calculator. The Skippy controllers got smaller over time. Eventually, the connector turned into the IEEE standard 488 and became known as the General Purpose Instrument Bus, or GPIB, across the electronics industry. Standalone instruments adopted GPIB and then eventually adopted the Skippy command set. Around the 2000s, Ethernet became a popular replacement for GPIB. Related, around that time, a standard emerged called the LAN Extensions for Instruments, or LXI. I'm not covering LXI in this video, but it turns out most LXI compliant instruments also support Visa and Skippy. By the way, Visa supports LAN as well. Its resource string is typically TCP IP, the address, sometimes the port, and then either INSTR or socket or HSLIP. Socket is basically just a telnet connection to the instrument, which is an easy way to connect and test commands without installing anything. Well, except these days you probably have to install a telnet client. As USB replaced serial ports on PCs, a replacement for proprietary GPIB card drivers emerged called USB TMC. If an instrument supports USB TMC, most modern operating systems have a generic driver that works with Visa drivers so other software can talk to them. For this case, the Visa resource string is usually the vendor ID, product ID, and the serial number of the instrument. Fortunately, you can use PyVisa and its list resources function to verify what USB TMC devices it can see. Then you can just copy these resource strings. And yeah, I don't know why this instrument has all this junk on the end of its string but using this exact name works. That said, not all USB ports on instruments are USB TMC. Sometimes they are virtual serial ports, and sometimes they are custom devices that interface through something like a custom lib USB driver. And coming back to the serial ports, in the DMM demo, I skipped over the resource string. It was ASRL dev TTY0. The number is the COM device identifier from the OS, and ASRL is a Visa resource name that stands for... I give up. I'm skipping over GPIB because good GPIB adapters are extremely expensive and out of scope for this video. One thing to know is that there are some inexpensive adapters out there that have dodgy Visa support, so be careful if buying one of those. Okay, now let's go and expand the previous example to automate measurements from a previous video. Previously on Workbench Wednesdays. <clears throat> we introduced the intern and manually measured the frequency response of an op-amp circuit. While it only took him a few minutes, the process was very error-prone and slow if we wanted to make circuit changes. So now, let's teach the intern about getting replaced by automation. Here is the DMM from before, a function generator, a power supply, and an oscilloscope connected to the TL081 op-amp circuit. The function generator signal goes in, the scope measures the in and out, and the DMM measures the voltage rail of the power supply. Like before, the DMM is connected with serial, the power supply and oscilloscope are connected by LAN, and the function generator is connected by its only option, USB. On the Pi 400, we have a Python script that connects to the instruments and configures them. For example, on the oscilloscope, I preset it, then turn on channels 2 and 4, and configure some measurements. There's a loop to send each of these skippy commands. Now, I'm not going to go line by line in this code because you can download the full script on the Element 14 community with the link below but the core automation stuff are these for loops that set a frequency and then measure the voltage in and out plus the phase difference. Each data point gets written to a CSV file that can be opened in a text editor or spreadsheet program. And then you can graph the data like we showed in the Bodhi Plots episode. Okay, here's the full code running while I drink my tea. The nice thing about this setup is that I can easily change the op amp circuit or the parameters that the script sweeps. I mean, now that the code is done, I have a question. 
Yes. Couldn't you write something in Python to do the graph instead of doing it with that other program? Well, yeah, I just wanted to focus on the automation. I'm not a Python programmer. Also, doesn't that scope do this measurement? I saw a video about that somewhere. Well, yeah, this scope has that frequency analysis option. In fact, I think all of my scopes do. I just use this measurement as one example. And then why use a function generator? The scope also has one of those built in. <sighs> yep, you're right. I could have done that. Thanks for your feedback. Now, one more thing I want to talk about is that this automation stuff is not always plug and play. So when your instruments won't talk to you, here's a few things to look for. When the Hello World IDN fails, try two things. First, enable a small query delay to pause between the read and write. Some instruments need it, some do not. Next, change the line terminators used by PyVisa. I found TCP instruments using socket need to be changed to just using the new line character. Not everything supports commands like operation complete, and some instruments, like the DMM, says it does in the manual, but it always returns zero which can complicate error handling when you cannot tell if the instrument is done processing the last command. One way around this is just to keep sending commands until they're successful. Sometimes instruments stop responding, especially after you send them a whole bunch of bad commands. Resetting the tool or physically cycling its connection might help. USB devices that require a PC to operate are not usually USB TMC. For example, this oscilloscope's Windows software provides a skippy interface over TCP IP. But not all USB-based instruments have this support. Speaking of USB TMC, the Python Visa driver works great with USB devices on Linux. It's why I use the Pi 400. But Windows is a different story. For example, here are the same four instruments we've used before, all connected by USB. Device Manager and Windows can see them. However, Pi Visa with the Python driver cannot. Even more, however, when Pi Visa uses the RNS Visa driver instead, it can see them just fine. Using this tool, Zadig or Zadig, you can change the instrument's INF from USB TMC to LibUSB, but then you also need to install a different version of LibUSB so that PyUSB can let PyVisa connect to the new driver. Okay, look, I got this process to work once, but then I couldn't repeat it for the video. So that's why I recommend using Linux instead, even if you have to use a virtual machine, at least when you're using USB devices. Other interfaces like LAN work fine with Windows. Last, most instruments can only operate in local or remote mode. Sometimes they automatically go back to local, sometimes they do not. When they do not, you must press a local button so that the front panel starts working again. Some of those issues might seem frustrating, but that's only because they are. However, once you get connected to the instrument, the issues you run into usually have a clear solution. One place you can get help with this kind of stuff is the Element 14 community. And even though I say this in every video, I really mean it this time. Remember, that is the best place to ask questions because no automation question has a short answer. As always, thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to issuing Skippy commands over a Visa driver through an IDI interface on a TCP IP connection to my remote electronics workbench.